Welcome to the Rested Garden Homestead. In today's episode of Friday Morning Ramblings, it's all about fertilizing and feeding your garden. There's not an exact way to do it. There's not an exact recipe. So I'm going to be just talking about principles. The whole key is to get yourself a routine for feeding the garden and find something that fits in your budget, find resources that are available in your area. We'll talk about that. We also got frost last night. I have had frost damage to some of my plants. That's okay, that was expected. So I'll show that off as we walk around. You can see some bags that are laying there. They were covering my peppers in those towers. They did a pretty good job. The other thing I wanna talk about is there's really six things that a garden needs to be successful. It's sunlight, you need eight hours of sunlight. If you don't have eight hours, you can kind of grow plants around that, but you definitely want eight hours. You need decent earth that's growing weeds or vegetable uh, weeds or grasses. That means you can plant in there the first year. You got decent soil. You want to be able to water. Uh, you want your soil to be able to hold water. You have to water regularly. You have to fertilize. You need the right temperatures, but most importantly, you need a gardener and that's you. So when we're talking about what a garden needs in a way of fertilizing, you as the gardener has, have to kind of figure out Again, what fits your budget, what you want to grow, what works best, and just take notes and develop your own routine. Don't feel like you have to buy the most expensive products, use them every seven days, and do all that kind of stuff. It just doesn't matter. In the end, really, what matters is compost. If you can make compost, you can put it in your beds. You don't really have to use the other stuff. All right, let's walk over to the other side of my garden. Before we walk over to the garden, Again, compost. Not everybody can make it, I understand that. Compost, at best, is a 111 NP and K, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium fertilizer. That's a low number, and that's perfectly fine. Your compost feeds the soil biology, it gives your plants what they need, it holds water, builds good soil. The reason that it's effective is because it just gives a regular, steady supply of all the main uh, nutrients that your plants need. Now, we can't always have this available. We'll talk about it. But I want to use that as a stepping point that you don't need, uh, you know, bat guano, kelp meal, um, any kind of stuff that's fancy with names and big numbers. It works. It's good. If you can afford it, use it, certainly. But it's not an absolute. In the end, everything becomes compost anyway. So the whole idea to feed your garden is a steady, low supply of nutrients. The trouble talking about fertilizers or feeding your garden is people ask a lot of questions like what do I use, when do I use it, what plants like it, how often should I do it, how much. All good questions, however it can't be answered that directly. Every garden varies based on what the soil is, what's in the soil, can you make compost, all that kind of stuff. So I'm just gonna give you my general overview and approach and adapt it to your needs. It's very different growing in raised beds or earth beds versus growing in a container. Of course, that container would need some soil because soil microbiology is different, the needs of the plants are different, the access to nutrients is different. So it does vary between beds like out there and maybe if you're growing in containers on a deck or something like that. So, I think the main point is your garden needs five or six things. Garden needs eight hours of sunlight. You can get by with less. If you are growing in less, then it's going to vary on what plants you use. But let's just go with eight hours of sun. Your plants need water. They need a good draining soil. They need fertilizer. And they need the right temperatures to grow. That's five. The sixth thing that they need, and I think it's most important, is they need the gardener to come in and take care of them and manage all of this. And when it comes to fertilizing, it can be overwhelming. But I hope to simplify it. So I have potatoes coming up in here. And even though potatoes are planted when it's cold out, and the potatoes are fine in the ground if a frost comes, that greenery up top, if a frost hits it too strong, it kills it back and it de delays your potatoes. So I did cover these guys up. So I'm going to be taking all of these off because again, the heat is starting to come in and that will damage the plants just as much as the frost. So let's kind of start in the fall, even though it's spring right now. In the fall, when I'm putting my beds to rest, I try and put down about an inch of compost if I have it. Um, animal manures is fine. Can't get through the gate. Animal manures are fine. When you're putting compost and manures in in the fall, let's just say like November, December, 
it could be a good four or five months before you plant in there and that will give that material time to fully compost and break down. You don't want to put compost or manures into your garden and then actively plant in them if they're not 100% broken down because what they do is they're still breaking down so they're pulling nitrogen from the soil to break down. Eventually they will give back to your plants but why they need that nitrogen to break down they're taking it from your plants. Your plants may struggle, they may look stunted, they may look yellow. I use the polycarbonate in different places. You can see that some of it has blown around. The wind was crazy too. I mean, we were getting 30 mile an hour winds. So you can use just a plain old bucket. And this tomato plant looks like some of the frost got to it, but also maybe it got too hot in there. So that could be a problem. Now, it looks like those leaves are going to die. That's where I would use some chemical fertilizers. Potatoes did perfectly fine. They survived. That's where I might use the chemical fertilizer to give that plant a lot of nitrogen and save it. The other thing that you can do is just cover over your plants with some mulch. That will give it a couple degrees of frost protection. All right, so we have one loss right there. We'll get back to fertilizing in a second. Peppers in here. Oh, those are potatoes, pepper. And it looks like, I don't know, it's gonna be like 50-50. Some of them got beat up, some of them survived. Let's take these off. Those peppers look good. I'm even using bowls and different things. Now it, looks, it like, looks to me like it got much colder last night than the local weather said. So if you're going to go with protecting your plants, if they say it's going to be 36 degrees, that's not quite frost time, you still want to protect your plants because it looks like it got colder here than was expected. So some of my plants are damaged. These are potatoes. Looks like they'll be okay. If you want to go and kind of track the 10 day forecast, if you can go to weather.com, that gives you, and I'm not affiliated with them, that gives you a great uh, picture of what the temperature is going to be. And you can also get an hourly report there. So you can see how the frost is coming in and staying in your air. Like if it's just going to be 32 degrees for an hour, that's much better if it's 30 degrees over a three or four hour period. Hope that makes sense. Let's take a look in here. Actually, I'm just gonna pull the whole thing off because I don't need this on there. It was just for the frost protection. And it looks like, you know, there's a lot of loss in there, unfortunately. Pretty sad. Let's take these off. So I went and cleared off just about all the containers. I <laughs> say I missed a few down there. So it looks like I have probably about 35% loss. Some of these look good. They recovered the same way. Some of them have frosted or died back. These all got killed off. And that might have been because I put these on earlier and I think maybe I closed them too soon and the heat just built up in there. So like I was saying, the heat building up, if you're using clear plastic or something over your um, non-frost tolerant plants can be just as just as bad. That slam was the uh, cold frame closing. The wind just blew it shut. Anyway, I put in these plants really early, some for videos, knowing that there could be some issues. I have backup plants, so I'm not that worried. So getting back to fertilizing, put down in the fall, can be not fully broken down, and it'll be several months where that can continue to break down. You can also throw down a couple handfuls of the organic granular fertilizers and that will give that time to break down with the soil microbiology and be more available quickly in the spring for your plants. I also put down leaves, some grass, um, I use that as mulch, I put down alfalfa pellets and you get the idea that there's so many different things that you can use that I can't tell you exactly what to do. But sometimes alfalfa pellets 
are available in your area, they're inexpensive, you can use them. Sometimes you can make tons of compost, you can use that. Maybe you have access to manures at a local farm, you can use that. Or you can put down the granular fertilizers. The whole idea with putting stuff down in the fall is to give it time to break down and establish in your garden. And when you put your transplants in, they're going to be able to use that more quickly. Now come the spring, right now it's uh, April 23rd maybe, I put down more compost maybe in the beginning of March, end of February, that will start to break down. But when you're using that compost, the manures and other products in the spring, you want to make sure again that it's fully broken down because you're going to be planting into that much more quickly and you want it to be available for your plants. You don't want it to be challenging your plants. Hopefully that makes sense. So maybe you're able or we're able to put stuff down in the fall or the spring. So what's the next step? And just to be clear, fully composted means the microbiological activity, if that's even a word, has pretty much stopped. Breaking down all the organic matter into nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, all the elements has ended. So you can just put that right in the ground. Which leads me to, there's two types of basic fertilizers. Water soluble, that means when you pour it on your plants, the NPK, magnesium, sulfur, um, calcium, that's all pretty much immediately available to the plants to use. When you use insoluble fertilizer, like the granular types, that means it doesn't mix with water and soil microbiology has to break that down to make the NPK, calcium, all that ava available to your plants. So when I put so my transplants in, I like to give them fish emulsion. I will link a video I just did on that. That's a water-soluble fertilizer. It gives them nitrogen. It's immediately available. It gets a lot of green growth go uh, going. And you may want to do that every 7, 10, 14, 21 days. It's going to vary. But rule of thumb, when I put in the greens, they get a drink. Two weeks later, 21 days later, they get a little bit more. And you can see that the potatoes over here survived. The ones down here got pretty beat up by frost because the uh, polycarbonate blew off. So it did get, you know, to a pretty good frost last night. And that's okay. I think they're good to survive. So using the water-soluble fertilizers, again, I like to use it on the leafy greens and setting up my plants that I'm just putting out. So for instance, right along here I have beets. I put in the beet seeds, gave them a quick drink of the water-soluble nitrogen fertilizer beets, we want to develop a nice root. We don't want tons of leafy green. So I may feed them one more time if they're struggling with the water-soluble fertilizer, but then I'm going to let it go because I want them to pull the nutrients, phosphorus, potassium from the ground, not nitrogen because nitrogen promotes the leaf growth, phosphorus, potassium from the ground so they develop a nice root. You know, you could use a fertilizer that's water-soluble that has more phosphorus and more um, potassium, but it gets to be kind of hard trying to figure out how much of that's already in your soil. If you're regularly putting in compost and manures and granular fertilizer, potassium and phosphorus don't get used as quickly as nitrogen. So sometimes you get a nice buildup of that over the years and you keep a nice consistent supply and you really don't need any more potassium or phosphorus. But you gotta kind of know your garden. You could do soil tests. Soil testing is really testing the top six inches. But all these different beds, different containers have been prepared differently. So it's a lot of money at times to get everything soil tested. You're better off coming up with a routine. Compost in the fall, compost in the spring, if you can't get that. Organic granular sprinkled down in the fall, sprinkled down in the spring and you just develop a routine and you keep your soil healthy, you keep your microbes happy. Microbes enjoy the organic matter. They don't really need the nitrogen and phosphorus and all that. So even if you're using granular type organic fertilizers, which are kind of like, you know, the little pelleted things, you still need to put in organic matter. You still need to put in compost. That's still needed for the soil life to grow. So my beds are getting transitioned over to kind of set up the top four inches. This bed's kind of sank down a little bit over time, got compacted. So I'm going to add in material to the top. When I do that, I'm just going to take a handful of any organic granular. Could be a 555, a 432, that's the N, P, and K ratings, and just lightly sprinkle it across. Put in my amendments on top, 
kind of work it into the top couple of inches. That's enough for this bed really. When I start planting in here, what I'm going to do is I have some compost. So let's just say this is where I'm putting in my tomato for a contest. I will dig out a space there, throw in a couple handfuls of compost, mix it through. If you don't have compost, a handful of organic granular, mix it through. Really mix it through the soil. You put your plant in and then you could sprinkle some more organic fertilizer around there. You could give it a drink of the water soluble fertilizer with the fish emulsion. And I think you can see how it can get really confusing. The whole idea is consistency, not quantity. What do I mean by that? When we come back over, let's take a look over here. That's where I have all my compost and manures and that's, you know, all organic. When they break down and get to the point that I can use them immediately, 100% broken down, the N, P, and K in there is only like a 1, 1, 1, if that. So it's not about bringing in huge numbers of nitrogen and phosphorus and potassium. Like when you use the chemical fertilizers like miracle Grow, that's like a 24, 12, I don't know, 16 N, P, and K. That's way too much. When I use it, I cut it down to half outside. Inside, if I use it, maybe a quarter. Just bring down the number. You don't need high numbers. Compost is a nice, even, slow, steady supply of nutrients. Your plants love it and the soil biology loves it. But again, I keep stressing it because it'd be so easy for me to just get on the high horse and say, hey, just use compost everywhere. Go make compost. It's not that easy for people, so I totally understand that. I am a little disappointed that my cherry tomatoes got killed off. I don't think they're going to make it. However, I was prepared for it. I have plenty of backups. So we'll probably walk over to there too. Actually, the backup plants are all in my house. I brought them in. They've been sitting out in the sun. So I know that I have plenty of plants. So when you're starting your first garden, you want to make sure you get eight hours of sun. You have decent earth. It drains well. If you've got grass and weeds growing in a space and water doesn't sit, that's, the earth is going to be fine. You want temperatures, fertilizer, and you have to be able to water it regularly. And the sixth factor is you. You are the gardener. So you're kind of coming up with a routine to take care of your plants. And that would include fertilizing. So if, I guess my best advice is would be something like this. Try and put something down on your beds in the fall. Try and put something down on your beds early spring that's fully composted down or use the granular fertilizer. When you go to set up your beds, you could put a little more the granular fertilizer on top, work it in. You're pretty good at that point. Anything else you want to add is perfectly fine, but it's probably not needed. Probably will help. Why do I say that? Because you can add in stuff that's not needed, but it does end up helping the plants. But you've covered your bases with just that basic setup. When the plants go in, fish emulsion, water them in, they'll like it. And then generally speaking, the plants that are establishing over March, April, and May, maybe you give them that water soluble fertilizer, the fertilizers that are immediately available to your plants. Every 21 days when small, 14 days when a little bit bigger, seven days if they're really large. Now, certain plants, like I told you, peppers, tomatoes, I don't keep giving nitrogen, but I would keep giving the squash and zucchini plants the water soluble nitrogen because they need massive leaves to support you know massive vegetable growth so they would keep getting the water soluble and they may be getting something in uh, July every 7 to 14 days because the plants are a lot bigger now container vegetables are a little bit different when you're growing in a container let's go over to some of those now container plants are treated a little bit differently because the plants suck the life out of the soil quickly. So they're going to need more fertilizer. When you're setting it up, I've done plenty of videos, you want a good container mix or potting mix, you can make it, you can buy it. I usually fill them halfway in something this size, it'd be about two handfuls of the granular fertilizer, mix it through, throw in the rest, another handful or two, mix it through and then I plant. That's probably plenty to you know, support your plants for a while. So you could give them a drink if you wanted the water soluble fish emulsion. Um, and again, I keep saying fish emulsion because I do want to differentiate. I try and use the organic fertilizers as often as I can, primarily compost. 
but if I need to I will use the chemical fertilizers and I don't want you to fear them if I give I, I was thinking of actually doing a video and just giving everything in my garden one quick drink of the chemical fertilizers just to dispel the myth that you damage anything you don't that's not gonna hurt anything if I use it two three four times a year if I'm using it every week on everything year after year after year eventually I'm going to damage out my soil what people don't tell you is if you use the chemical types um, wisely you're adding in compost and other organic matter and you're taking care of your soil life everything can coexist perfectly well and why do I say that because not everybody can afford compost organic fertilizers they need some sort of fertilizer and what's the least expensive is or are the chemical types and I don't want you to think you're harming yourself by using them. Alright, I got back on that soapbox. So I set this up with a granular fertilizer. You could throw in some compost, you could throw in some manure as long as it's 100% broken down. And these are pretty well set up to get started. But once they start getting larger, like the collars there, they're going to need that water soluble nitrogen more often. And that could be every seven days, 14 days, 21 days, depending on the side. So your strategy for feeding these plants begin to vary based on their size, size of the container, if they're in the ground, if they're not in the ground. And only experience is really going to help you kind of figure it out. You can use everything I say or people say as general guidelines, but you sort of have to take notes, use different products, and kind of figure out your routine. And standing here, I mean, I got a ton of cleanup to do, which I think I'll be able to take care of this weekend. All right, let's go over to my seed starts. And I'm, those are my backup plants and stuff that needed a little bit more protection. But generally speaking, I survived the frosts. I guess one could come in May, but I like using uh, weather.com. And the reason I'm saying that is people keep asking me where to get your information. Weather.com will give you a 10 day forecast, which is fairly accurate. Um, and there's no nights in the 30s for the next 10 days. So that will take me into May. And then if I can just get to May 15th, I don't have to worry about frost anymore. So I'm probably going to go all in this weekend. Hopefully I'm not. Um, <laughs> what's the right word? Well, hopefully I don't pay the price by starting a little bit early. So oh, one more place. I used clear trash bags right over the vertical towers. You can see one plant's a little bit damaged. Generally speaking, they all survived. I'm really happy about that. So the pepper tower is doing pretty well. But I think I'm out of the frost and we're going to go with that. You know, I'll just be happy. The tomatoes in these containers did all right. They were just covered with buckets in a bowl. No big deal. And I guess this is one of the things that I was most concerned about. And these guys are just getting beat up. These are my potatoes. So they were covered and they look great. You can see a little bit of damage right there. The frost seeped in. But I didn't want all this to die off because this would be a loss of four weeks, six weeks worth of growth and the potatoes would have to start over again. And maybe that damages the production. But so far, so good. Cold frame worked really well. Those are the peppers that I overwintered in the house. Those tomato plants are beat up and just looking at them, they're yellow. They're gonna get chemical fertilizer. That should snap them back and then they'll be organically cared for for the rest of the season. Okay, let's go over to my seed starts. So inside is where I have my backup plants. I brought them in, of course. They've been sitting outside enjoying the weather for the last couple of weeks. But if I learned anything, it's not that you can really protect your peppers, your tomatoes, or plants that shouldn't be out there when frost is around. It's to have backup. So I have plenty. I even have some to share. Really don't like losing the plants that I lost out there, but you know that it's gonna happen. All right, let's go to more transplants that have been outside. You can move some of your transplants closer to the house when the temperatures are getting to like 31, 32 degrees, sometimes that works. Sweet potatoes are really fragile to the cold, so they're a little bit beat up, but I've cut enough slips off of there. This is where I'm storing the rest of my plants. Some of them are hardy. Most of these are flowers and herbs. And 
I just tuck them up by the house. You know, aside from some of them needing water, they did pretty good. These are actually pepper plants that I forgot and they did fine. So you can get some warmth protection by bringing them, you know, closer to the house, maybe cover them with something light and you should be okay if they're not out in your ground. Oh, there's some more peppers. Let's go take a look at those. The other thing is cold tends to settle and I think that's what happens in my area. Even though they say the temperatures might be 34, 36, just where I live, there's microclimates. So the cold air comes and settles, and that's what it does in a garden. Over here, these are some of the backup plants. I forgot I stuck them over here. No frost damage at all. So that tells you a little bit something too. Just being raised off the ground makes a difference with warmth. And you're just talking a couple degrees difference between your plants surviving and your plants dying. So that's why I bring them in, of course, cover them, that gives you a few degrees, raise them off the ground if you need to, throw on an extra blanket over a bucket you may put on stuff, all really depends. But you can't beat frost if it's a prolonged period. And maybe we'll end on that thought, maybe summarize a few things real quick, is if it just touches 32 degrees for an hour or two, plants generally do okay. If it's several hours where the temperature drops, because it would have to go from 32 to 31 to 30 to 29, if you get three, four, five hours of freezing temperatures, your plants just aren't going to make it. There's nothing you can really cover them with, aside from the cold frame here that's sunk into the earth, that's really going to keep the heat around them. So you're going to have some loss. So that being said, I'm going all in with my garden this weekend. All the warm weather crops are coming out. I'm going to be planting seeds, zucchini, squash, and all that, and that's fine. I'm prepared in case a disaster comes along. Again, things that you need. Eight hours of sun, decent earth to start, warm temperatures, water, fertilizer, and you need the gardener. Don't get discouraged if you have losses. There's plenty of time to replant. You know, none of us like it, but it's going to happen. Um, you can be cautious and you can wait all the way to your frost date and a week beyond and you're still going to get great production or you can kind of push it like I did. I did a lot less this year based on a disaster from last year, so I really don't have that many plants out there and I'm not that worried about it. Thanks for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and when it comes to fertilizing and feeding, start developing your own schedule, pick products you like and just try and stick to a routine and you're going to learn what your plants like, you're going to learn what works, and over the years you'll have a great routine for feeding and fertilizing your garden.